Can you guys say amen? Amen. The word is read in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities. Um, y'all can sit down for a minute. Oh. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> in the same way that we submit ourselves to our authorities and superiors in our church, homes, work, and school. In order to do that, we need to obtain, um, yeah, we need obedience and respect those people who have been placed in our authority position. Um, for example, um, I'm in ROTC, and I know there's a boy that he started the class with me this year. He has another friend that he knew for a while in um, the same program as us, and one day I asked the young boy that started with me, do you like the class so far? He said no, and I said why? He said because his friends act different in the class. I said, what do you mean different? He said he always yelling at him and giving him a hard time in the class. I said, well, that's his job if he is the commanding officer and gives you order, you need to obey him and do what he says. It looks like he was giving him a hard time though, but then not, but he wasn't. He was just following orders from the person that gave it to him. Amen. And the rest of Romans chapter 13 verse one says, there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. All of us in one way or another have to follow these people that have been placed in our authority position over us. In the same way that we obey and respect our pastor Alex and Carmen Feliciano and our co-pastors, in that same way we have to respect and obey our youth pastor Alex and Miriam and all the leaders of the church, because when we obey and respect them, we please God with our actions. Yes, amen, amen, praise um, God. And with that, um, and Ty Titus, I think, um, yeah, Titus chapter three, verse one, it says, remind the people to be the subject to rulers and authorities to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good. And, amen. 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 Praise God. God bless everyone. Amen. God bless Brother Kevin with that word. Amen. I have my phone here because I have different apps up, so I looked through my phone. Let us all stand really quickly. I just want to jump on back with my Brother Kevin real quick. And Ephesians, open up to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. When you have it, say amen. I guess no one has it. Ephesians 6, verses 1, 2, and 3. And the written scripture is read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Children, obey your parents of the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that you may go well with you, and that you may live long in the lands. Praise God. You can sit down real quick. Amen. Puede sentar, todo el mundo. Jumping on to what he said, authority is not only a principal or pastors or the co-pastors or the youth pastors, but I would bring it in a sense where it's a little more home. And I commend Brother Kevin and Sister Kelly because they're the only really youth that we have in the church. And for the most part, I think they're pretty obedient to their parents. But we also have to make sure and understand that we continuously continuously obey our parents. When we're older, it doesn't matter our age, that we listen to them, because they understand things that I don't understand, but they do. I just wanted to emphasize a little bit on that. Um, now to my preaching. We're going to open our Bibles to John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. You don't have to stand. Just, just look for it. And it says, John... 13, 34, and 35. Amen. A new commandment I give to you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Mm -hmm. By this all men will know that you are my disciple if you love one another. Yes. Amen. She she wasn't kidding or she wasn't, can you load this down just to leave it? 
kind of loud, like my pops. She wasn't lying when, I, when she said that it's been a rough week for the both of us. It has been tough, tough money. But one thing, one thing I, I learned to do is trust in God in everything that I have. I'm, I am one, I'm just like my father and my brother. I love what I do for a living. Everybody knows what I do, and I take my job seriously. To the point where, like my brother's always saying, like Pastor, uh, you've passed out to saying, work for God, work, do your work job as you're working for God. And make sure everything that you do glorifies the Lord. At work, at school, whatever you do. So I'm like that. I do my job. I goof around, yes, I'm a goofball. I'm, I'm lighthearted, I like to laugh. But I do my job, I'm very serious at what I do. So the other day, um, one of my coworkers, he decided to go behind my back and try to write something negative about me and another fellow coworker. He didn't know, I wasn't supposed to know anything. So I found out via another coworker, she told me, hey, this person wrote something negative about you in this letter. So I got the letter and I read it. And it, it hurt me. Because it's not, it's not like me what he was writing. He was saying a whole bunch of stuff that I'm lazy and I don't like to pitch in and I'm not a team player. And it bothered me because I didn't understand where this was coming from because I'm one that I look out for everyone as much as I can. I do, I, I try to help out. Sometimes I pick up their slack and for him to be saying that I'm lazy, it, it just threw me off. But this is what I was going through and my wife can tell you, I really didn't make too much of an emphasis on it to her, but in my quiet time, it bothered me because I'm not that way, I'm, and I get so stuck on, I'm not this way. So what went through my mind as a human, as a man? I'm gonna get him back. I'm gonna go to his face, I'm gonna tell him off, and let that be that. Or even better, I'm gonna write another letter against him to my supervisor. I'm gonna go to the captain and write a letter to him. But I didn't. I kept it and I left it alone. I put it into prayer. I told Miriam, Miriam, I'm not coming with a message on Friday. I'm not doing it, forget about it. I'm not, she said, why? And I explained to her the situation. And she said, sometimes you have to go through things in life for a message and it hits home first. And it touches you before it touches anybody else. And I left it at that and I said, okay. Throughout the week went on. I'm expecting this big old explosion to come through. You know, my supervisor is gonna come down my throat and pull me in. She pulled me in the office and she looked at me and she questioned me. And all she said was, I got some information, but I know it's not you. I got some information, but I want the truth. This is what she told me. So I explained to her the situation that went on. He also lied about something else that happened with my vehicle. He said all four tires popped and, and I was stuck on a highway. I mean, he exaggerated the situation. So she, once I explained it to her, I mean, it doesn't matter, but I'm just letting you know. It, 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 the thing was, it wasn't his business to be saying anything anyway but he decided to. So when she got the information, I explained it to her, I said, listen, it wasn't like this. She said, oh, okay, that makes more sense. No, I didn't get in no trouble. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't look bad. If anything, he looked worse because she thought he was lying now. So she told me, just make sure you cover yourself, <laughs> document every single thing that you do, no matter what it is, if it's something minor or small, cover yourself. So that way, nobody can come against you. So I gave all the glory to God because I said, you know what? Instead of me putting up the fight, God fought for me. Amen. And he and my testimony and my work ethics proved itself in, in all. Amen. Yes. Instead of me getting mad, instead of me being bitter and carrying these grudges of anger in my heart, I just said to myself, when she told me those words, I said, Lord, you know what? I give you my I give you my anger, I give you my issues. But Lord, your scripture tells me to love thy enemy as I love thyself, right? That's what scripture says. So I prayed for him, and I prayed for him, and I prayed for him, and the situation, I haven't seen him since he wrote the letter, went on vacation, so I will encounter him on Monday. But throughout this whole week, God has been speaking to my life. God has been telling me just to love thy neighbor, love thy neighbor, so this is, what it's, this is what's speaking to my life today. If we can go to Matthew, the book of Mark, no, Mark 12, 31. Amen. 
The second is this. Love your neighbor as you love thyself. There is no commandment greater than this. God is so... The word love is said 551 times in the Bible. God emphasizes so much on love. It's amazing. And, and one thing that uh, Pastor, uh, Youth Pastor Alex got me thinking is sometimes, it's, a lot of times, almost every time, this scripture is just words, but it's a lot more to it if you continue looking and researching. If you keep on, like he said, if you just keep on digging in, you're going to find more stuff. It's going to open your mind, and it's going to open your mind. And it really did. It really opened my mind a lot to realize that God spoke so much upon love because it's, it's the epitome of what Christian is. Amen. If you know, it says you cannot, you cannot love God if you have hate in your heart for your brother. So it doesn't matter how much you come up here and you speak. It doesn't matter how much word you know. If you have something, a, a, a bit of hate in your heart, you don't know of God. And we all know what God says if you don't know of him at the end. And that's why I was thinking to myself, wow. That's why towards the end, when, when God comes, there's going to be a lot of surprises. Because these people thinking they live a lifestyle of Christ. They live in a good lifestyle. I'm dedicating myself to the Lord. But they hate in their heart. They won't be entered. You know, they, they're the ones who are going to be baffled in the end. And it's, it's just amazing how, how much he, he, he emphasizes so much about love. We must remember that God desire, and, and, I, and I said to myself, why should we love our enemies? Why should I? Why should, you know, if God did it, right, he paid the price for it, why should I? Why should I do this? He's already done it once. And it says here, we must remember God's desire is to have all men saved and come into him. The knowledge and the truth. Someone... Someone says, but my enemy is a fellow Christian, so how do I go about that? Let's say the person is a fellow Christian, and, but you can. It says here, we need to remember that Jesus shed his blood for all men. You, when you love your enemies, you are showing them that the love, which hopefully in the end will convict them and save them. Amen. The point is not to come to church and, and, and to say things and don't have conviction behind it. I can say all day, I praise God and I worship Jesus, but if there's no conviction behind it, if there's no, there's no testimony behind it, I'm just using words. Amen. It's easy to say, I love you. It's easy to come up here and shout to the Lord and, and sing a song, but if there's no real conviction behind it, it's just false. It's nothing to it. And people get caught up in, in emotions, because I got emotional at first. I got angered, and I said, as a man, he should have came to me and talked to me as a man. But I said, after, after I thought about it in my spirit, I said, what example would I be setting if I was to, let's say, curse him out? What example would I be setting if I was to go to his face and test him as a man? That's what he's doing to me. I'm mimicking Christ, not mimicking him. Amen. So Amen. therefore, I have, my actions have to be different of what his approach was to me. Amen. And that's the thing that I want to impact in our lives today. It's easy, trust me, it's easy to think about it now and think about Christian things now. But when that person really angers you, when that person really gets under your skin... Think twice about what God would have done. Put yourself in his shoes. Would he have slapped somebody? Would he have, you know, proved them, made them vanish like he could have? No. He took it all and he took it in strife for our sins. He did it for us first and he didn't have to. So what minute little situation that I go through in a week is nothing compared to what Christ did for me years ago. Amen. 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 We all know that the end for sinners is eternal damnation. No one, no one wants to go there. But we must do, God did everything he could possibly to make sure no one goes to hell. And that's our job today. Our job today is not to make sure, if I angered, let's say Sister Jessica, my job is not to anger her to make her go to hell. My job is to save her. And I know sometimes I fall into these things where I can anger people, and that's not my... That's not my position anymore. I'm starting to think differently now that I'm, like she said, now that I've, I've realized that I've dedicated my life to the Lord and I fixed our situation that we had going on, which was one that was invested in sin and, and, and all these things that came along with it. Once we rectify, say, Lord, we give it to you, Father God, and we don't want this no more. He's trying to use different things and different arrows and different things to, to, to try to bring me down. And she, she brought it to my attention. She says, hey, ever since we've gotten married, different it's not just one thing. It's different things have been trying to upset you. Different things that, that people have tried to do to upset you. People that I thought were my friends. People that I thought, you know, cool co-workers. they just coming out of the woodworks and, and doing things. And it's making me, it made me angry. 
But after reading this, these words, after understanding what this is about.